certainly the floor show. Big rally today. It continues. We need to talk auto stocks because autos have done unbelievably well here, at least when it comes to month over month sales. The U.S. automakers adding to the market celebration today. And frankly, the Japanese automakers too. Ford, GM, Chrysler, all beating the street's expectations for the sales in the month of June, along with Hyundai. Uh, I think uh, Honda also did very well. Nissan, Toyota. Despite gloomy forecasts, GM sales rose 1%, beating estimates for a 6.3% decline. Ford's light vehicle sales, well, they decreased 5.8%, but that was actually better than the projected loss of 6.6%. And Chrysler's deliveries rose 9.2% in June. Fiat Sergio Marchionne doing something right. Chrysler giving the company its 51st consecutive monthly sales increase. What is Chrysler doing so well? And which model powered the automaker's sales most strongly? Well, the success of that might have even surprised CEO Sergio Mar Marchionne. Car coach automotive analyst Lauren Fix is with us now, along with our own very, our very own Jeff Flock. Uh, let's first just get overall to, to Chrysler. Those numbers, Lauren. Yes. And Huge. When you, okay, you say, okay, 9%, that's really nice, but one of their models was up 28%. Jeep. Jeep is doing so well. The Cherokee, at first, when it came out with those little narrow headlights, some of the real true Jeep enthusiasts were like, I don't know, it's kind of weird. But you put that car off road, and it is capable on road, off road. It comes with a multitude of different engines, different designs, different styles, and so they're making everybody happy now. Well, you, you said it looked kind of weird. I saw one on the road the other day. Sci fi is actually the right word. You see yeah. that on the list here? Yeah. It's a sci-fi look. It's a facelift. That's not it. Right. Uh, but <laughs> if we were to show the new one, because that's a Laredo, you would see the headlights that were absolutely kitty and space -age. Look at that. That is so different. And All the yet, geeks must love it. I it's saw so one on the road, and I said to my son, look, look, at that's a Jeep Cherokee. Mm -hmm. And great. now it looks like it's getting the, the SUV set on board. Right. The Grand Cherokee is also doing very well, mm -hmm. and they also offer an eco diesel model. So they're offering a wide array, which is very smart. Even their Ram truck sales were up, and that's also because they're the first ones to offer a half ton diesel, which has never been offered before. There's a lot of manufacturers that have done so really impressively well, even this year. Audi, unbelievable, increased 14%, 23% up month over month. That's, they're not doing the same thing that. Jeep is doing, they went the other direction. They're bringing in RS models, diesel lineup, S models, very smart, and they're selling them like crazy. Jeff, you've been looking at all of the auto sales numbers here. What, what really shines to you aside from what we've just talked about? Well, I was going to say, you talk about Jeep. What about the downside for Jeep? We're, we're looking at strengths and weaknesses. They've got an ignition switch recall issue as well. They just yesterday expanded that recall. It affects some of their minivans. And NHTSA is investigating them because they actually recalled some of those vehicles earlier. And NHTSA is suggesting they didn't do a good job of the fix on those things. Hmm. So, you know, they run the risk of being lumped along with GM as, uh, you know, the recall or the, uh, the bailout babies that actually are not making very safe cars. Right now. Well, I and like what you just did, giving us the, the, worst, the worst case scenario, but then also the best case investment scenario for some of these names. What other ones have you looked into, Jeff? Well, well, GM, we ought to, you know, say something positive about GM because everybody's saying negative things. Mm -hmm. I got to say the positive for me, if I wanted to pick something, wouldn't be in this country. It would be China. I mean, they sold... Uh, the market was 22 million vehicles in China last year, 15 million in the U.S., and GM is the number two foreign automaker in China. You know, you mentioned the Transformers movie. That's that Camaro in that one. They're going to use that to try and boost sales over there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's the, that's the major, okay. uh, major positive for them. That's the growth area. Before we finish, Lauren, back to the Jeep because I find this fascinating. Yes. I used to have a Grand Cherokee. It was too much of a gas guzzler, but it's yeah. the best car I ever had. Yeah. The difference between the new KL and the older XJ, which I believe. Believe they've discontinued. Right. Now, there's been a lot of changes. You know, what they're offering is a totally different vehicle. I think one of the big things that's causing an attention to Jeep as a whole, and what you didn't see before that you do see now, besides that cool look, mm -hmm. is in the inside. They have the Uconnect screen, which has won a ton of awards for actually doing what it says it does, from Bluetooth to navigation, easy to use, easy to function. I think the cars themselves really do function off road. I think that they tried to 
compress down less vehicles and have more choices. And they succeeded. And Chrysler is a brand lineup, the Fiat 200. What a beautiful car. If you haven't seen one, you can't believe that that's a Chrysler 200. Well, the auto sector lives, and so yes, do the stocks. Does. By the way, Fiat is the best performer year over year, up 37%. We have Ford up 9% year over year, General Motors up about 6.7% year over year. Our thanks to car coach, automotive analyst Lauren Fix, along with Jeff Walk. Good to see you.